what are the most important design elements when it comes to IoT? Some would say that the communication aspect of the design is the most important part, while others would say the functionality of the design itself. Sure, I think both of those elements are valid, but I contend that the most important aspect of any IoT design is its security. But implementing a robust security solution for an IoT design can be a tricky process. Well, until now, that is. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. It goes without saying that IoT designs today demand comprehensive security implementation. But incorporating a robust security solution in your design can be a complicated and time-consuming process. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Ancha Schutz from NXP and I explore NXP's Edge Lock Secure Element and Secure Authenticator solution. We examine how this flexible, future-proof, and easy-to-deploy solution can be a great fit for a variety of IoT designs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from NXP. Hi, Ancha. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, yeah. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for giving me the chance to present here today. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about the Edge Lock Secure Element and Secure Authenticator today. But before we dig into the details, what kind of applications are we looking at here? There are, in fact, a lot of IoT applications and devices requiring security today. So if we go through the different applications, let's start with industrial, which is very prominent. So in industrial, you need security for the infrastructure and also for standards like OPC UA or IC 62443. IP cameras also have a big requirement on security, especially for the data integrity. Smart meters and energy management, it's obvious that also here the requirement on security is pretty high and it's standardized through DLMS COSIM. In gaming, uh, you need security for counterfeit protection. Gateways and routers, you need to secure the complete infrastructure. And then one very new prominent application is EV chargers, e-mobility, where again the data needs to be secured and there is a lot standardized in ISO 15118. Application area of access and smart lock. You need security for ultra wideband access in general and all kind of free hands access. For computing and accessories, you need to authenticate the device components, including uh, Qi charging. For smart home and consumer devices, there is a new standard coming up, which is called Matter. And here the attestation requires a high level of security, obviously same as for smart appliance. In healthcare, you need to secure the healthcare applications with counterfeit protection. And last but not least, mobile accessories, where you need to secure the device component authentication again. Great. Now, I would imagine that within each of these applications, there could be multiple use cases. Is that correct? Yes, indeed. We just went through the different applications and there are different use cases in the applications. A lot of use cases appear in most of the applications I just showed you. So, for example, a secure cloud onboarding you pretty much have in any kind of application or device because most of devices you onboard to clouds. And device-to-device -device authentication is also a prominent use case across all kinds of applications because in a lot of applications like industrial, smart home, you authenticate devices to each other. Here I put together an overview on all these kind of use cases which come across in the different applications we just looked at. Secure and seamless cloud onboarding, very often or mostly using the TLS protocol, is a use case which you find in almost all applications like industrial computing, smart home, IP cameras, etc. 
And the same as just mentioned, device-to-device -device authentication. So to authenticate devices to each other, this kind of use cases you find in a lot of applications. Attestation and proof of device origin is a use case getting more important to make sure the proof of device origin. Sensor data integrity and protection is a use case which you find in all kinds of applications where you deal with sensors. Then late stage parameter configuration, it's a complete different use case, I would say. This is where you have parts and which have at the end maybe different destinations, need different configurations and you do the configuration at a late stage, maybe even in the field or at the late stage in the production. And here it's absolutely key that this configuration is, is secure and authentic. Wi-Fi credential protection is relevant for every kind of application using Wi-Fi. Secure access as a use case in industrial application. A more exotic use case is device ID for blockchain, but with blockchain applications coming up more and more, this is also something you can achieve then with a secure element or you need high security. And trusted platform module, TPM, it's very often associated to security a TPM. And basically, and I will show this later, we, we provide TPM functionality with our secure element. There are use cases which are enabling compliance. So for example, Qi charging, you can enable through a secure element. Meta device commissioning, you can also enable the compliance. Same for the industrial IC 62443, OPC UA or DLMS COSIM. Okay, so Anja, can you explain what makes the NXP secure element solution such a good fit for these kind of security use cases? Yeah, sure. Our secure element brings the highest level of security with a very high flexibility and a lot of tools which makes the integration very, very easy. We bring a security level which comes from the smart card world with common criteria EL6+, plus, certified hardware and operating level. And we also have FIP certification and a certain product with a FIPS configuration available if this is requested. We provide all kind of both RSA and ECC functionalities also with really future proven curves. And we also provide an interface for encrypted communication with the host processor and the metric ciphers for end and decryption. The security features at the core, all well protected in the secure element. To integrate security, it's a challenge for a lot of people because you really need to provide secure code and make use of all the secure functionalities in a proper way. So what we have come up with is our edge log secure element family with multiple solutions for various use cases in industrial, smart city, smart metering and smart home. And our solutions comes with pre-integrated operating system and a pre-integrated applet providing all kind of functionalities pre-coded, making use of the secure algorithms. We provide an extensive middleware package with you as a customer can integrate with your microcontroller software firmware and then just call with the middleware the routines from the applet. Dynamic user memory for SC050E with 50 kilobyte memory. And we provide multiple interfaces, so I2C target. We also have an I2C controller interface, um, 14443 contactless interface, all depending on the configuration. This is a complete what we call plug and trust approach, which makes it easy to integrate this very high level of security with different MCU and MPU platforms. Excellent. Now, Ancha, can we investigate the details of the EdgeLock secure element? How does it secure IoT applications? Yeah, the secure element is a turnkey solution for several IoT applications and use cases. It allows easy integration from trust provisioning to secure coding. It provides a certified future-proof and updatable platform. And what is really important, we come with an extended product support package for the customer's integration. Implementing IoT solutions or security are there, it's not an easy task. So 
with the SC050 platform, this whole implementation gets really easy. And we at NSP, we take care of all the security enablement aspects from integration, trust provisioning to secure coding. And we have pre-implemented the crypto algorithms and protocols required for the most IoT applications from TLS to key derivation functions. Also, which what is important, the SC050E and our other secure elements, they come pre-provisioned. So you have some profile already pre-provisioned, which allows you easy integration with clouds. Excellent. Now, can the edge lock be incorporated into any IoT architecture and how does that work? Yeah, we are pretty flexible here and flexibility is one of our key approaches. So as you see on this slide, the secure element can be integrated with almost any kind of host, MCU and MPU. The SS050 comes with a pre-integrated applet and we provide big middleware package which allows the integration with different host MCU and MPUs. You can connect to the host I2C interface, of course, and also the um, SC050 comes with an I2C controller interface who can directly um, authenticate and secure a sensor ap applications. For flexibility, we have also versions with a contactless interface so that you can interact with an NFC reader. Last but not least, cloud connection is one of the key use cases for security. So we are the host MCU MPU, you would then connect to a cloud service. And here also we offer an identity management service, which is called edgelog to go to um, facilitate the credential management if needed. Excellent. Now, Anja, could you elaborate along the lines of an example of cloud onboarding? How does the edgelog secure element help me here? Yes, yeah, that's an excellent question. Actually, this is one of my favorite use cases because it's used so broadly. So with the SS050, you can ensure secure and zero touch connection to both public and private clouds. And using the EdgeLock SS050E, we provide end-to-end -end security from chip to cloud. The EdgeLock SS050 protects the credentials which are used to establish uh, the TLS link, which is mostly used for cloud connection. It protects a credential to establish the TLS link with a cloud server provider. And the keys, they are really stored in the EdgeLog SC050 and never exposed to any party during the lifetime of the device. And with our middleware package, we support TLS 1.3 and pre-shared key cipher suits using either symmetric keys or ephemeral keys. And in the very simple block diagram, you see here is the main setup, the TLS connection between the cloud service and the device using the SS050 with the keys integrated. So could you explain a little bit more in detail the product offerings by NXP, especially the EdgeLock SE050E? Yeah, so the SS050E as a product we are focusing here in this campaign, so I will go on this one in detail. Added to the slide CA5000, which is our certified secure authenticator, which you can also use for basic IoT use cases. The all-round product covering all the use cases we just discussed and all the applications would be the SE050E. So we have our EdgeLog SE050 family in the market for quite a while, and the SE050E is a new mainstream variant of the successful family. It comes with a pre-installed IoT applet, providing pre-coded all kinds of functionality we just discussed, and it's common criteria L6 plus uh, certified. It supports multiple ECC curves like NIST, BrainPool, Coplet, and which is also important, it um, supports TPM functionalities. 
So if you're looking for TPM functionalities just in an IoT environment, then a product like SC050E is like the ideal one. It also supports MIFA key derivation function. And as I mentioned, it provides both I2C target and controller functionality so that you can, for example, connect directly a sensor to it. For the cloud onboarding, we support multiple clouds here. If you go on our website, nxp.com slash sc 50 you find application nodes for all kind of different clouds, providing step-by-step -step how to integrate SC050 to those clouds. And last but not least, we have 50 kilobyte of user memory. So Anja, what kind of supporting assets do you guys have for the edge lock? This is actually what makes this plug and trust approach really tangible to really make security accessible because we do not only provide the chip with a pre-integrated applet, but much, much more. So we provide, first of all, a development a kit which Arduino compatible header. So you can integrate then uh, with all kind of other MCU and MPU um, platforms or development platforms, which also have an Arduino header. So with this, you can really easily start the development, putting together your SEC 050 board with your respective microcontroller or microprocessor platform. Then we have what we call this plug and trust uh, middleware package. You can download from our websites and here we provide different uh, modules depending on the variant on use case. You find TLS layer there in the middleware package. We also come with a very extensive documentation package. We have documentation for getting started. So, for example, if you get your um, SC050 development kit and your MCU development kit and put it together, you find an application note for most of the NXP controller families to give you a step-by-step -step approach, like how to put the development kits together, what to download and how to get it running. We also have in-depth documentation, for example, for IC62443. So how can you use the features of SC050 to achieve IC62443? If you want to onboard to a certain cloud, you find different app nodes onboarding to cloud ABC, and you find a step-by-step -step approach in each of the documents how to realize the onboarding. And last but not least, um, as part of the middleware package, we have all kind of sample codes, which you can immediately use for your application. We have sample codes for cloud onboarding, or you find a sample code for OPC UA there, and many more. Excellent. Well, Anja, I think this is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Kira, thank you for hosting the session. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from NXP. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.